last week. Uh, they don't seem to see them. Where are they? Did they ever buy? Did they even play? I don't think they even played last week. Yeah, no, doesn't look like they did. Um, from what I am observing right now. Yeah, okay, so la last week they had to forfeit, I guess, because they didn't have enough people to play or, you know, exams, what have you. Like, it, it is a busy time for colleges right now. Uh, their opponent last week was... Uh, oh, oh, maybe Georgetown was the one that forfeited then. But they could they they couldn't play last week because the other team forfeited. So I don't exactly know how that factors in points at all, how forfeits go. Points. Um, but we, they are back at it again this week to snap back. So we're going to see how they do here in the 7.30 time slot. Hope everyone's doing well. Hope everyone's stretch, stretching to keep themselves healthy. I'm hoping that everyone is drinking water because, you know, hydrate or dehydrate, as they say. Um, make sure make sure you get a little exercise, whether it's walking too. Walking, running, squats, who knows. What I, ring fit adventure, I got that over there in the corner. You know, I do that sometimes. My ring fit is just covered in an inch of dust, dog. <laughs> I, listen, they tried their best. They really did. It's that fun. game is great. It's so much fun, but it's not fun enough to make me want to. It's so close to making me want to exercise. It's this I like close. It. I should be. Don't don't follow my example. I hope everybody in chat um, is able to take care of themselves properly, able to get exercise, get up and going. Because gamers, remember, your body's a temple. You can't game at, at peak peak levels unless you treat your body just right. Okay. That's right. Absolutely. Got to make sure everything is is mm -hmm. good to go. Because uh, a healthy with with a healthy body comes a healthy mind. Mm -hmm. You, you can't just lab smash characters all day. You have to lab your own character oh, no. too. Self discovery. Um, gosh, I really that that saying that analogy out loud really hurt me right here. That was that was a, that was a tough one uh, to choke out of there. Uh, how are we doing, Sean? This evening we had like a bit of a break, right? Because we had like a forfeit. Um, you know, just like after the first school match, it happens sometimes. I hope you guys enjoyed watching EGF. Um, Goodness, what's the mainstream official EGF? I believe uh, they had some exciting matches from what I saw. I tuned in briefly. Um, and we're just waiting for the players to be ready. And we'll be with you guys super, super shortly. Yes, I think, I don't know if the orders are already set up for both teams. So I'm not even going to try and say if they are, unless Devin gives me the confirmation. Uh, uh oh. they had before okay all right okay so we'll figure we'll figure it out we'll figure it out so both of these schools uh <laughs> so, so both of these schools their records from what i've been observing uh so far have been pretty pretty here and there uh st john's did win last week uh wichita also got a forfeit win last week as well However, Wichita did fall to William and Mary the week prior to that, uh, whereas St. John's University also fell to DePaul. And I believe in week one, um, I'm trying to see if both of these. So Wichita also coming off an L for week one, while St. John's came off a W. So right now, kind of kind of up in the air. It doesn't seem like Wichita has actually secured themselves a proper w just yet well st john's has gotten a few under their belt thus far taking it last week over yukon uh so we're gonna see how they do today which taught really really needs to fight to get on the board here i feel like uh but you know at, at the end of the day it's all for fun it's for college players to ex uh explore the collegiate mm -hmm. league and stuff like that to really put their talents on display and to just get better because i feel like when you do fight off against better players uh you just get better over time by default so. Yeah, no, absolutely. And guys, of course, seeing you all good in the chat is really, really appreciated and encouraged. Um, so, so give it up for your favorite players from the universities. And with that being said, we are going to be jumping into the first match, which is going to be a Loma Mola. 
Did I say that right? Yes, I said it right. Alamomola up against Geonosis, playing yeah. Joku and Bowser respectively. So yeah, we've seen both of these players before. Um, Geonosis looked pretty good from what I can recall. And I think St. John's also has a very solid roster as well. And already we're seeing these startup conversions right here, you know. As, as Joker, positioning is super important with this character. Uh, I was watching some MK Leo VODs yesterday. And it's, it seems like this character wants to stay in as much as he can and not put too much range between him and the opponent because Joker's quick movement and the way he can shift his hurt box around really, really helps him for getting around big characters, especially Bowser. Ooh. All right, Matt, right there, Lomomola trying to go in for the edge guard. Definitely the right idea, but just slightly mistiming it. Bowser was a little bit too close, going to be still snuffed out by that recovery. This time, going super deep, got Gov, still able to get it back onto the stage. And yeah, that was a really, really good example of an edge guard. Time get light, and they're saying that Bowser really couldn't do anything in that position at all. In the slightest, it was just such a nasty, nasty place to be in. Um, ooh. That's the good grab. It's gonna be punished beautifully with an F tilt. Good awareness from Geonosis. Uh, as as Bowser, you just want to get those few good hits in, make sure you kind of overwhelm the opponent a little bit, to get that big hit fully into the kill. As Joker, the game plan is a little tougher. You can keep Bowser in disadvantage for a while. Uh, however, you know you have to make sure you're not overstepping your boundaries, whatever, mm -hmm. or else Bowser can pick up momentum, which is kind of what we've seen so far uh, here from Geonosis. Having a Loma Mola in the corner. Mm, not really sure what a Loma Mola was looking for there with that neutral leg. Definitely super aggressive. And now they're paying the price. Getting gonna, gonna get two frame twice. That's two frame yeah. ridiculous. Yo. It was, hit him with it was the just GG's twice. Hit him with the GG's fist bump. Mm -hmm. Right Ooh, now, Loma Mola. Just on the plat, continuing it up and into the up. Really, really good damage output. Are they gonna get this edge guard? They're not. They're just gonna fade back, understanding that you know what they don't want to push any further. But how are they gonna fight out of the corner? As we see right now, Loma Mola managing to find their way out somehow, trying to find the starting hit so they can get those combo strings right now. But oh, there you go. That F smash gonna take that stock right there, really, really handedly. So yeah. A little bit of back and forth going on right now. It seems like Geonosis is really, really comfortable once he gets Alomomola off stage. Uh, and, but Alomomola's advantage has been pretty nice as well. Uh, so. mm -hmm. uh, nice just catch on him not pressing any sort of buttons whatsoever. Aggressive recovery option, tech chase with the side B. Alomomola is just putting on this damage, making it all the way back. That uphill hitbox coming in before the down air could even have anything to say. This is a nasty position to be in as Bowser almost catching that, but unfortunately slightly misfacing themselves. Um, good use of double jumps though, just to sort of bait an option and be able to just take the time to get back onto the stage. And uh, Aloma Mola trying to go a little too quickly there and just kill confirm. Like he just followed through completely without actually seeing if uh, Geonosis got hit by it. I am liking the fact that Aloma Mola is opting to use a bit more projectile than before with that Aegon when he did have. Uh, are sent out, and I love these Egos as well. The neutral, just to keep out there. Wait, that was oh so my scary! Goodness. Oh my god. That. Oh my what god. What just happened? What so just Bowser, happened? Bowser had enough armor on his down smash to the point where... To go through down tilt, right? Yeah. Down tilt apparently was too weak of a hit to break it. The spot dodge down smash gets, gets him every time. <laughs> ah, got him, GG's. <laughs> And my man down tilted through. Oh my god. It's almost more unfortunate than rolling through, to be honest, because my man had a good play in mind. It's just that I don't think he knew that the Bowser armor was going to power through it. So. Yeah, Still, uh, not, I wouldn't have been able to anticipate mm -hmm. that either. Neither would I. One of the things. So you're like, yep, that's, that's just the ultimate things, baby. Push, push one. Um, Geonosis, I feel like they did a really, really good job, um, sort of after the first stock. Uh, they just did a good job of, like, sort of really focusing on minimizing how aggressive they are in neutral. They were just sort of waiting for the Loma Mola to jump in a lot. Uh, so going into game two, I would like to see a little bit more defensive play from a Loma Mola. Um, I'd like to see them just playing back a little bit, um, and seeing where they go from there. But other than that, you know, kept it even for the, for the most part.
His execution was pretty good as well, honestly. Those two frames were super duper clutch by Geonosis, especially those F tilts. Mm -hmm. um, managing to just pick out the right option in the right time to punish a lot uh, little slip ups here and there. Uh, I really, really liked how Lomomola was pressing advantage, but I feel like they need to make sure their execution is tight because with Joker, if you are even slightly imperfect with your confirm or execution, you're going to get blown up pretty hard for it just given how much of a mm -hmm. little, little stick man Joker is. A man Joker is very has a very thin figure. Do you know that Ar he doesn't even get Arsene for most of the game in Persona? Spoiler alert. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Arsene, and that's why Pretty early in the game, he's like, "All right, peace." <laughs> <laughs> he just disappears into the void. Yeah. Alrighty. Well, going into game two, I feel like Geonosis did a really good job of just sort of sitting under the platform, you know, waiting for <laughs> um, Aloma Mola to come down with something like down guns, and it was pretty unsafe at that spacing, since they were really unable to follow up from it. So, you know, once again, I just want to say Aloma Mola not really overextend as much. Um, and we'll see what happens. All right, here we go. Game two. Are we going to see a run back to PS2 or okay? Town, Town okay. City. So it should be a little bit easier for Alomo to maybe kill off the sides with his edge guards. Other than that, I feel like this can also aid Bowser. It gives Alomo more movement to, to space around Geonosis. I feel like Geonosis is going to have even less trouble killing off the side now. But maybe uh, Lomomola just wanted more space to, to camp or use projectiles or, or do something else to kind of force Geonosis to come to him. Such a good catch on the jump out of shield. Just when, when somebody runs up and up tilts your shield like that and they hit you for it, like it's like, wow, they're, they're confident in your out of shield options. So to me, that's like a big sign that Lomomola, you got to mix up the way you're sitting the shield, you got to mix up your timing on it. You, you, you know, Geonosis is clearly doing something right. Still being able to lift, though, is what I would say. Gonna get two frames regardless by the F tilt. Wow. Oh, I'm, I'm, my man never misses his fist bump after this set. Let me tell you, my, my man has connected every single one of those two frame F tilts. Mm -hmm. right. He's got the timing down super duper hard on that, which is not easy to do against Joker, uh, especially with the tether recovery. Like, you have to have your timing pretty much on point against tethers. Like, against uh, our setup, they do like a guess almost. Yeah, tethers are definitely true. gonna be a guess, but with a lot of recoveries, it's just like gonna be matchup experience and like understanding like you know what's the visual cue what's the audio cue uh that being said good counter on the recovery yeah you really should not be letting um anybody with a hitbox on the way up especially if they don't have armor to get back onto the stage if you have that option available to you uh gonna go through the high recovery though once again not want to get countered and spiked but definitely gonna come back to bite them a little bit already taking 69 percent uh loma mola just bringing it all the way back Ooh. And yeah, they're looking a lot more razor sharp on their confirms. I like that they're not afraid to go deep off stage because Joker can do that. Joker's one of the few characters in this game, I feel like, or not really that few, but one of the characters in this game that can afford to chase you uh, wherever you are on stage, given that he still has his jump uh, or his tether on, on lock. Ooh, okay, I like the down smash that's happened there. Just because he was waiting for the invincibility to wear off on Bowser's ledge hang. I don't know if Joker can hit that. But I like the fact that he did, you know, try to look out, scope out the invincibility wave up. And really, really great catch of that F smash. Right yeah, there. that was such a good fake out. I love that jump off stage. It basically said, hey, buddy, I'm going to edge guard you. Psych, get F smash, silly. Uh, and then you just got to die for it. <laughs> um, wow, that fire breath has been doing uh, Geonosis so many favors, especially at mid range where, like, a Loma Mola is, like, like, you know, spending a lot of their time uh, just really squeezing in every bit of damage that Geonosis can at this point. Ooh, okay. I, I really... These guys are just kind of going back and forth on each other a little bit. I like how uh, Geonosis has not been staying too stationary where he was. I feel like once you get locked down by Joker, it's a lot hard, harder for you to deal with the onslaught, given just how slippery his movement can be. So I like that Geonosis has been moving around and changing his positioning frequently to kind of force Lomo to almost guess sometimes when he's able to go in. Wow, what a mix-up on Shield. Lomo Mola definitely did not see that one coming at all. Tried to go through the uh, back hit of the multi-hitting nail and see the back hit setup. Was not able to find it though. Um, this is about the percent wood killing confirmed too. So just, you know what? I like the fact that he's starting to fetch for a little bit. Oh, that was oh. such a clutch gun right there from uh, from Aloma Mora. Mm -hmm. He knew that Geonosis was running in for the forward air to try and kill right there super duper early, but managed to get the gun off 
to actually stall the recovery. And that was so clutch by Aloma Mola. Holy moly. Wow. Yeah, that was that was that was that was tight. That was yeah. super tight. 100 percent that game was extremely even um both of these two players are just sort of really going back at it with one another something i've noticed from the both of them i really feel like aloma mola uh a little bit linear in the way that they're jumping out of shield um and geonosis has been calling them out for it multiple times you don't see them try to go for grabs you see them running up to your shield and hitting you uh, another thing though, I do feel like Geonosis is fighting their way out of the corner a lot. I'm seeing a lot of really, really aggressive options uh, after they like neutral get up. I see a grab, I see double jump, instead of like slowly getting back onto center stage. And Aloma Mola has just done a really good job of just sort of punishing Geonosis for that and keeping them off stage even longer. Uh, that being said, these two players are really going at it. I'd love to see who is able to make those adjustments first uh, and who's going to be able to take home the, uh, the bread. Yeah, for real. This is like a like the first match I'd say of this crew battle is very very crucial just to dictate who is leading and who, who is which school will have to work a little bit harder to make up the ground. Obviously, um, it I, it seems like though most of these crew battles that I've watched so far have, have been dictated by the first match, just building momentum for their team. If you can take out a crucial player uh, from one of the crews, it, it looks a lot better because once you take, you know, once you, once you play out the set, that's it. That person can't be used the second mm -hmm. time. It just goes from best of three to best of three, uh, between two new candidates. So it, it's, it's going to be tough. It's definitely going to be, you have to make sure you're putting your strongest guys first to establish a good early lead. Uh, and you know, make sure your back half is also able to secure it just in case it gets a little close because I, I do believe your order has to be locked in i could be wrong though i know mm -hmm. people change it every now and again but i'm pretty sure once the crew battle starts you have to yeah lock in something along those lines and it's interesting that you bring that up like you want somebody saw in the beginning somebody saw it at the end um honestly it can be really tough like to like think about who's the anchor especially like since you know stocks don't really like carry over uh, in between games it really does change the dynamic of this yeah. as a crew battle that being said right now really solid just ledge play from geonosis they're able to back up a really nice clean 47 percent mama mia mama mia that nice was catch by geonosis right there with the down beat yeah that, that does have a spike hitbox on it so if you do get hit in the air by bowser while he's on a downswing you're gonna be eating some you're gonna be eating something you're gonna be eating death yeah, eating death a little mola did. Uh, I got pretty full of it too. Right now they just can't seem to bring this match back into their favor until they got that grab. That was a very, very risky double jump. But they were still able to make it back. But again, those aggressive options from the corner, just up being like that is so dangerous. Tries to go for uh, the punish on the recovery. They're not able to find it. Mama Mia, that was, that was really, really good. And now Geonos is very, very determined to close out the set, getting the first uh, set winning points for Wichita State University. Uh, I do I do think he is, I believe, their strongest player or like close to their strongest player that they have in their arsenal. So if they can close it out early and get that early lead, that is exactly what they need. Um, but right now, Arsene is out. So this is Aloma Mola's time to, you know, start applying pressure because that's the majority of the power Joker's gonna get when he doesn't, when he can't really get in. Typically, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the extra little oomph that Arsene provides for Joker allows him to have a little bit easier of a time getting in. There's a little bit easier time racking on damage, and especially easier time for putting the opponent at disadvantage. And that's definitely gonna be the stock. Not Good quite. Good right there. Good DI. Phenomenal DI. Impeccable, really. Uh, yeah, that's not going to be too particularly safe on hit there. you got to be so, so careful and just understand like what follows up into what, what's going to be unsafe on hit. You know, what's going to be set. Uh, this is a really, really good lead from Geonosis. Tries to go through the same trick that he used on the first stock. But, uh, yeah. That's great edge guard, exactly what Aloma Mola wants. Um, you know, just to be able to even that up so quickly um, on a game three last stock. Yeah, this is rough. This is the this is where champions are made right here. Opts to go for a second flamethrower instead of like a F till their smash attack. That might come back to bite Geonosis later. Ooh, not quite, but this edge guard is just, you know, really, really sticking with it. Geonosis is finally able to get that F tilt. Treated that last stock super, super well. You know, I don't mind prioritizing, you know, fire breath over. Um, you know, just going for an F tilt there. 
it was definitely like a little bit committal, but you know, just want to be sure to attack on as much damage as possible. Um, and it's just a really, really active hitbox that you can put out there. My man did a great job of holding the lead he established super early, caught those landings, and clutched out exactly what he needed to clutch out, you know? And just, with Bowser, you know, you don't really have a lot of trouble finishing your food. He gets that big hit. That's pretty much going to be curtains for the opponent's stock, whereas Joker kind of has to, like, find his opening a little bit more, and Geonosis did a great job of respecting what he needed to respect. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it's a close game, though, despite that really early stock being dropped from uh, Loma Mola, but that's going to be given Wichita State the uh the little boost that they needed right there i believe they got a total of four points for that set given how stocks uh worked out there so really really good stuff for them mm -hmm. for establishing that that early lead although st john's does have a point on the board so the gap is not that wide for them to breach yeah no not that wide at all it's barely leg up one point isn't really going to make the difference at this point you know, it's the beginning of the set. Really, you could you could be you could be down eight points, and you'd have more than enough time to make it back over the course of the night. Um, yeah, I think that was really really good for both players. I definitely think, um, you know, towards the end there, once Bowser has like a hard read like that, he can take those stocks extremely early. You have to be able to commit to those. Uh, it's going to be a guess to some extent, but if you guess right, your reward is just massive. As soon as he got that stock, that was like a big wake-up call to a Loma Mola. It's like this huge, you know, it's like this make or break. It's all of the psychological pressure at once. Um, overall, Genesis did a really good job on the last stock. They slowed it down. They just prioritized damage and were able to get a nice, clean ledge trap. Yeah, my, my, my man did perfectly. You know, he clutched, he, he did exactly what he needed to do, you know, when he needed to get that the clutch out the landing with the F-tilt right there. He did it. Like, if you let Joker get started up, it is very, very scary, especially if you're heavy. So my man just mm -hmm. kept in there. He used his good options, used his at Bowser's excellent range at his disposal and just got the hits. Also, the execution on those F-tilts, he knew exactly when to throw them out. Like, that's probably the MVP move that he used. Uh, mm -hmm. for that entire set. That was just a really, really solid play right there. Managed that to F-Tilt, I mean, that F-Tilt was, was putting in the work, you know, <laughs> it was it had its 9 to 5. Uh, he was just able to get it consistently so much, able to get those stocks. And, you know, that's what you really need to have tight on an execution level as Bowser. If you're able to take those stocks at 90, 100%, um, and your opponent's taking yours at 180, you know, obviously you're already going to be um, at just like a completely different level. It just makes the game so much easier for yourself. You don't always have to constantly box with somebody on stage. Uh, so yeah, um, you know, they were just really, really tight with it, really clean with it. Every Bowser, it's like, you need to be able to practice it. You need to know what's your audio cue, what's your visual cue um, for every single character. And I'm surprised that he was still able to get a couple of tethered two frames, because those are not easy in the slightest. Yeah, well said. Uh, I believe up next we have... So I'm seeing Apezilla for Wichita State, which I believe... Is that anybody Bowser player? I don't think so. I remember seeing Apezilla before. I yeah, think I think Thitko was a Joker player as well. So what are you saying? I think we might be seeing... Uh, we're definitely probably seeing another Joker, I, I think. Perhaps chat can um enlighten us because, because you guys you guys know your own players you know what's happening you guys know what's up well what's the scoop what's happening what's the scoop <laughs> <laughs> wow um so that was that was like a slobber knocker though the first uh -huh. set for sure like just a complete back and forth between both players so it was, it was really really good ape still plays hero that's right i do remember now um so we're gonna be seeing Hero versus Joker probably. I, I believe that Co plays Joker. Sure? I'm pretty sure that Co okay. plays Joker because I remember St. John's having two. Jigglypuff uh, apparently, according to P.S. Lenny, that Co does play Jigglypuff. So it's gonna be Jigglypuff Hero. Not something that you see all that often, honestly. So I'm just trying to imagine what that's like in my head. Um, I remember both teams' rosters. I know that Alomomola and Geonosis played Joker Bowser. Apezilla played Hero. There it is. I believe it's a Link player. And City. Who did N City play last time? Oh my god, I can't remember. Uh, and Lenny, I believe, was a Mega Man. Jay Grunt plays Greninja. Tendo. Forgot who Tendo played. And I believe No Mill is a Cloud player. 
Mm-hmm. So I, I know most of both teams' rosters haven't commentated them before. Just very, very forgetful. <laughs> That's okay, Sean. We've all been there. How I'm there right now, I have no idea who half of them play. We see so many people like every single week that it's yeah, just yeah, yeah. That's true. There, there are a lot of players that come through these parts. In fact, I think we get, I think, 40 different players per block we have to cast. So we have to know 40 different players per week. Mm-hmm. So that's a lot of players to keep track of. You know, that's that's four. That's 40 whole people, basically. Whole people. Whole people. A, that, yeah. As opposed to half people. <laughs> Um, so we'll see. We'll see what yep. happens. I'm very, very excited to see the next mm-hmm. set. I know both of these schools. So far, Geonosis leading out pretty nicely. Uh, but Alomola putting up a really good fight to keep those, the gap. Yeah, those, those exceptionally close. They're really going, to, like, had it not been for that spike in the beginning, like, you know, it would have been, like, extremely close. Uh, but just oh, being yeah. able to, I mean, I mean, they stole it, right? Like, Geonos has definitely stole that stock a lot earlier than they should have. Um, I'm interested, though, whether or not that spike always will spike out, or perhaps that was because Aloma Mola was holding out. Um, because there's a fair amount of spikes that really don't give you too much directional influence. Um, so I'm not 100% educated on the matter. I don't know if Aloma Mola could have perhaps lived that if they just held in, maybe teched it a little bit. Um, your guess is as good as mine. That's true. Uh, so I guess we are waiting on them to come into the arena right now. In the meantime, if you guys have been enjoying the stream as you've been seeing it so far, you can drop the technical director of the stream, Mr. Devin3000, a follow at twitter.com slash house of 3000. They also have a beautiful Twitch channel where they mm-hmm. present a lot of amazing Smash content. Uh twitch.tv slash house of 3000 you can catch them on sundays doing their fight club if you wanted more of an open play thing they also run xeno on wednesdays xeno wi-fi which is like a really really well-renowned tri-state uh weekly if you also like uh doramgar's commentary you can follow her on uh twitter.com slash doramgar smash also on twitch.tv slash doramgar you can follow me at twitter.com slash fan 9 and also twitch.tv uh fan 9 anyway we're getting back into it we got we got pikachu no jigglypuff so i've been lied to that's okay i'm, I'm not upset about no it. Not jo- no other joker either uh so i yeah, maybe my memory bad Maybe, maybe someone else plays Joker, plays Joker on their, their roster. And immediately getting the kaboom into the sizzle, dealing 66%. Uh, wow, this is so difficult because I feel like right now, um, Pikachu's just sort of going in with a lot of approaching teach <laughs> Yeah, that move, that move has a pretty powerful win box on it that sucks, sucks you in even if you try to jump out of it. Oh so you're almost there. Definitely having really... the luck of the draw with some of those projectiles. Oh, yeah. Almost all of those came in extremely clutch. The most important thing when approaching Hero is approaching very carefully. So doing so throughout the air in a way that uh, that a Hero can catch onto your pattern probably isn't the best solution. You kind of want to force them in shield or just force them to do something that they wouldn't normally want to do uh, just by encroaching space on them. So I, th- I think... Um, Bitco has to be very, very careful with how he decides to approach against Apezilla. Mm-hmm. Jolt is so big in this matchup, and just having bounce just invalidates one of the most powerful neutral schools in the game. So it's interesting to see the adaptations being made by uh, by Thitko here. That being said, can't be dash attacking into shields like that. Kind of fishing for it at this point. Um, there's definitely a lot better ways to, you know, fetch for kills and. Right now, I can't help but feel like some of this is pretty linear. Yeah, it's it's also just waiting. Like, if the, if the hero tends to be shielding a lot, Ooh. great, great F smash right there to catch the spot dodge right there. That thing does have a very, very lingering hit block. So, uh, if you try to spot dodge, you'll probably get hit. You also have to make sure you've got your early percent combos on lock. That down throw to Nair is super duper crucial. If you can apply any sort of pressure on a hero, it is 10 times better for you. Uh, it's what Pikachu does best. best. Those low percent combos, really just racking it up from frame zero. Um, you know, it's an zero, easy zero to 50 at least. Um, ooh. Ooh. Uh-oh. Yeah. Uh-oh. That Who got a little crunchy. Who's dropping it, Devin? Yeah. Whose packets are we... Whose packets are leaving us? Mm. Wichita. Okay, so Mr. Eight. So they're all operating off one switch as well. Uh, 
Uh, that can so. definitely be a little bit problematic if they don't get their stuff sorted out. Yeah. And so unfortunate, they did not opt for the fully charged up the uh, was not able to get back onto the stage. And just like that, that means the cow really back in it. Able to get the T jolt into the dash attack and start a couple of up air blinks with up tilt. Okay. Really this is the momentum that they needed to bring back. You know, it looked a little hard for, uh, for Ditko to approach throughout the beginning of this game, but he has managed to find his way back almost immensely after that uh, unfortunate SD. Mm, such a good beautiful Ooh. side to be there. Really just sort of catching Ditko off guard there. Um, but I feel like at this point, it still is just getting hit by a lot of these T jolts. And as a result, uh, Ditko is just able to follow Ooh. them up with dash attacks. Once again, the SD. What is happening today? It's not, sometimes your hands just aren't properly attached. You know, maybe he underestimated the amount of, uh, or rather, overestimated the amount of distance covered by Pika uh, up B. Because you do need to get those that double input to get snap to ledge and just angle your recovery well. Mm -hmm. While Pika's first recovery has a good amount of range. Ooh one does as much and just a beautiful beautiful edge guard right there as one of the things pika does excel at is dominating you off stage as well as on stage really good comeback right there from fitco throughout all that mm -hmm. that's a really nice day it was just like perfectly timed perfectly mm -hmm. positioned hero he's going to be doing one of two things right either a he's going to be cheating back onto the stage via zoom <laughs> or he's going to be coming back with a really linear and exploitable recovery option uh, the only thing about it is, yes, it leaves behind like a big massive hitbox that, you know, of course he can die really early in, but his head super, super exposed, uh, you know, and, and, and on the way up, he doesn't have a hitbox or anything. So it should really be a nice free edge guard for just about anybody in the cast. Oh, boy. Yeah, Re really, really, really good stuff right there. Really, really clutch. Um... Ooh, yeah, just just the overestimation right there on that up B. Not, not the best, but managed to tie it back up as Hero does have a little bit of startup on the recovery unless they do the instant uh, up B, which is what I think they went for. But if you got a Pika coming from the top, you know, you're, you're going you're gonna to drop. Mm -hmm. Ditko did a really, really good job of bringing that back, you know, T-jolting a lot to tack on damage. It's just really, really smart stuff right there. Um, yeah. So we're going to see if Abezilla swaps to Puff or continues to ride it out with the hero. I don't think the hero did too badly. I just think they got caught on a few stuff. And you can't SD. You cannot drop those stocks. You know, you got you got to keep them. Because SDs are super duper crucial in a crew battle. Not not just a set, but even more so in a crew battle. Because you, you not only have yourself that you're dropping that stock for, you have your team that you're dropping that stock for. Mm -hmm. So um, we'll see how it goes. So far, not too dominant of a lead right now being established like really really close games from both schools we need they definitely need one player to break out or they just need to keep clutching out set after set after set if the games are going to be this close mm -hmm. so we'll see how they do yeah uh definitely in the beginning Thitko was just sort of really struggling uh there's always like that like you know, first stock of fighting Hugo. Yeah, it's like fighting yeah. characters like Hugo, fighting characters like You gotta recalibrate like a little bit. You gotta recalibrate, you gotta be like, okay, well, maybe I'm not fighting 100% Super Smash Brothers right now. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta remember all of this stuff. And then suddenly when it all comes back to, you remember how to pace this, you remember what options to look out for, you remember like the really specific post ranges of some of the attacks. Um, and that's like when you can really start applying that pressure once again. Um, and I just think that Ko did a really, really good job of that. And Apezilla, uh, you know, in disadvantage, really, really struggled. Off stage, really, really struggled. Uh, but honestly, that's just Pikachu sometimes, and you gotta hold that. Oh, definitely. Absolutely. Uh, um, we're gonna see. We're gonna see. They're, it looks like they're coming to the arena now, so it seems like the, the counter pick has been chosen and they are ready to go. Mm -hmm. uh, very, very curious to see how this is gonna go. Gonna be sticking with the old Hugo and Pikachu. Um, I feel I feel like uh, Thicko going into this has a much better idea of how to initiate, how to start interactions, how to like sort of drift when they're using T Jolt um, as well. I think they started off very very unsafely. Um, not sure about that skull bash. I think that was like a misinput. It be a little bit of something. Ooh. 
But I do, I do like the stick to hero and the stage counter pick as well. I think triplats are very, very good for hero just because it gives them a little bit more real estate to mm -hmm. kind of move a little bit more around. Also, there there's like a very situational setup where um, you can do up be out of shield as hero and kind of jet the opponent into you for maybe even a smash attack. Uh, so there, there's definitely more mobility at Apezilla's disposal right here. That being said, I don't think Pika has a single bad stage. Yeah, no, not at all. It's Pikachu. At the end of the day, like these super top twos, um, they, they ain't going nowhere. Um, you know, I, I do like the way that Ditko has been committing a little bit more offstage to punishing Kilo. That's definitely where he's at his weakest, trying to go for one of these F smashes, position themselves a little bit too far back to be able to cover the goal, and just slightly adjust the distance. Um, also, I love this music choice. I, I don't know. I just think it's kind of sick. I love it. I vibe with it, yeah. <laughs> it's good. Oh, boy. Uh, this right. time, though, they're going to, they're trying to go for these two frames, uh, and they're not, like, 100% confident on the timing of when Kilo's going to be getting back to stage. I understand that they don't want to commit, but, like, honestly, Kilo cannot be pressing buttons off stage. It's relatively safe for the most part. Oh, oh my gosh. Ah, yeah, that, that move has a ton of space that it covers horizontally, mm -hmm. so you have to make sure that you're, you're, you're avoiding it at all costs. Uh, I really like the usage of Accelerattle right there. When Hero's MP is low, it gets a little risky because they do need to get another normal hit before they get the MP uh, regenerated just a little bit. So Accelerattle makes it so that your movement is super duper quick, you're very, very difficult to hit, and you have no trouble getting in once you're able to. What a tech chase on the platform that was brilliant. There oh. was nothing that Pikachu could have done in that circumstance. Break time. I don't think up smash or the down smash would have been the best choice there. I think they could have definitely done a lot more started off in something like no loops. Uh, much the thing more is, than not a lot of players know when they're going to get out of clang. Like I doubt a lot of players know how many seconds it specifically takes to get out. They're just like, okay, I know they're invulnerable. During like I feel like five seconds, you could still like full hop and just wait. Yeah, you know? I th I think that was a good. That wasn't the worst option they could have. Yeah, Thidco is just so, like, tunnel vision into this T-Jolt, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> that was a bit of a flex. <laughs> just, like, constantly pressing you to be knowing that you won't be able to shoot it out. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 was, that was a bit of flex. They were able to clean up that stuff nice and quick. Thidco getting Kilo off stage. Just, oh, wow, really, really good option just to uh, down smash. Extremely active. Um, which is covering basically any other uh, button that uh, apes a little fast. Oh! Critical. <laughs> I like that quick attack just to get out of the Kaboom range. Kaboom, Kaboom might have actually might have been able to kill that far out uh, from stage. I know Pika's only at 54, but that move is very, very scary. Uh, so, Ditko kind of struggling a bit here to catch Zilla quite a bit. I love, I just love the neutral B baits to make them think they're going to throw some. I feel like Ditko needs to approach this game a little bit more slowly. What Hero wants is for you to pretty much land in front of him every single yeah. time so we can get that those powerful spells off. He wants yeah, you to always make, make, wants to make you antsy. He wants to make you jump in in front of him with overly aggressive options. And sometimes, like, you know, you'll hear me saying this all the time. Walk and shield. Walk and shield is gonna like generally speaking like be your best friend because Hero's with punishes are ridiculous. He deals just an absurd amount of damage to you. Um and you just gotta slowly take the time to break the space. If you get like too antsy and you just wanna like get him before he gets the menu out, you'll explode. One more big hit from Hero should be able to seal with that uh, I believe oomph or, or psych up is up. I think it's oomph. Uh, which I believe it retains the amount of power that you're able to put out. For a bit. Good shields there. Now we'd like to see like a bit of a tempo change from Fitco playing a whole lot more defensively. That's a hero off stage without a double jump. But Fitco oh. not able to get a back here with anything of the sort. Just ends up getting the up air. Resets uh with like the drift out back here. Not gonna be dying quite yet. They're getting it back onto the stage. Got opts for the bounce. Just sort of not letting Fitco get any more T jolts off right now. This is a good time to wait for the longer you wait. wait. More oh, that's it, is what I would say. That was really, really good patience on Thitko's part right there to not swing until Hero came right up. Because one good hit. Oh, that was up throw. No. Oh, but he drops it. And uh, the rollback up smash. That'll secure the set for Thitko, clutching it out for SJU, tying them up Man. in sets right now. 
The bag was fumbled. I feel like with oomph, you are able to up throw becomes a lot more potent of a kill throw. And if you're on top platform, you know, peak is at 135. No, that was at 135. Up throw would kill at like 115. Yeah, all, all you had to do was yeet. Yeah. Yeet. So, bag <sighs> was, was fumbled a little bit there by Abezilla. Yeah, and, and up smash is not even that generous. And Pikachu is tiny. Ugh. I think that gives actually the slight lead to St. John's. I believe it is now 5-4 in terms of mm. the differential, given that Thitco did not drop a game that set and managed to clutch it out. So St. John's yeah. back in the lead, or rather takes the lead. That was just like a really, really slight misplay. Yeah. <sighs> that the thing is like, in last hit situations, slight misplays are massive misplays. They can, they are, they will literally make or break the entire set. If you do not capitalize on your kill opportunity, my man was sitting in the bubble for a while on top platform, just waiting for you to swing. You have to capitalize. You have to take every. You have to turn every inch into a mile, bro. You gotta work. You gotta you gotta work it out. Um. So yeah. yeah. Up tilt, down smash, anything that would cover anything. your side, down tilt. Literally anything. Literally anything besides the up smash, the move that, you know, like you, 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 you know, you swing upwards. Oh. Uh, granted, you know, it, it is like a really like high pressure situation. It is difficult to execute. You know, you know, Lord knows that in that situation, I would have probably, you know, done something else that would have been probably even more silly. Um, so <laughs> I can't really say anything about it. Um, but yeah, that was really, really close. The code did a good job of just closing it out. Um, I, I, you know, I think there were definitely a lot more opportunities where they could maximize their damage output and maximizing stage control. I feel like they were resetting a bunch or just sort of knocking, um, which we call them, Apezella back onto the stage instead of perpetuating the edge guard. And that really, really came back to bite them. As soon as I saw that up air connect towards the end there, uh, and Apezella getting back to stage, I like, you know, died inside a little bit because that means, you know, Hero's going to take more time and he's going to be able to play on stage longer. And that's exactly where you don't want him to be. Yeah, seriously. Like, you, ha you have to watch your positioning. It is so, so crucial as to where you are, especially in those really last hit scramble situations. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not looking too pretty right there for, for Thitco, but he managed to find his opening because Pika up smash is super duper powerful. You know, Hero doesn't have to, especially off top platform, that brings you super duper close to the ceiling of the stage. So, uh, you know, you got, got to capitalize. Got it. Got to Just find the point. If someone literally serves you the kill on a silver platter, you have to react. So it Absolutely. is a high pressure situation. It's super clutch, but you gotta you gotta keep playing and putting yourself in those situations because consistency. You'll you'll if you if you keep putting yourself in those situations, eventually you won't drop them. So mm -hmm. do not get discouraged, Abezilla. Keep trying. Keep doing what you gotta do. You know, keep playing. Unless you hate this game, then stop playing. It. But, you know, but if you love it and you want to get good. Keep playing, keep grinding, keep trying. Don't let the, don't let this one L discourage you. And with that being said, our next match will be Tendo up against N City. Um, I can't believe I've actually seen either of these players um, play thus far. Or if I have, I apologize. I'm gonna You're throw attached. out a guessy. I think N City plays Zelda, and I think Tendo plays Joker. This is my guessy. Let's well, let's go That's take a look, Sean. Let's, let's go and see if your if you assumptions were correct. And just like that, we are going to be jumping into a set. So it's going to be Palatine I'm and Fox. very wrong. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, I do remember N-City being a Palatine player now. Yes. However, I don't think I've ever seen Nintendo Fox before coming out. So Fox is not a character you typically see online a lot of the time. Or in general, really. I feel like a lot of people have opted to drop him in... Uh, Four other spaces like uh, like Wolf or Falco. So we see a fox on the scene is is, is it's good. I like it. You know, I, I really do enjoy like how much fox mains have like developed their shield pressure. The way that they start jabbing your shield, baiting you out of shield options, playing like super super reactively though. Um, I just love it. I think it's really good quality play every time I see it. Just to get the up air from the photo, not able to find it though. I really do appreciate just like the pace um, at which Tendo is taking this right now. Um, they're not pushing in too far. They're just like sort of 
waiting for Palutena to extend a little bit. And for the most part, you do have to play super defensive against Palo like that. Oh boy, and yeah, it, this this can be a little bit hard actually, because Palu does need startup or being able to catch jumps on a lot of stuff. Fox is so mobile that he will keep you guessing pretty much where he is most of the time. He can get himself out of scary situations just given how quick his dash is. And trying to pin him down, especially with a character that can't really reliably lock into multi-hits, on, unless uh, they use Nair, like Palu, it, it can be a little hard to find the opening. I'd say Palu still has the advantage in this matchup, but uh, Fox is, is, is good. I feel like nobody should sleep. On, on, on my man, the, the Spacey himself. Spacey uh, King. I have my own opinions about that, but that will be for another day. Right now, um, excuse me, Nintendo is just holding down the stage super, super well. I feel like Ed City is just not being allowed to play much of the game um, just because of how defensively Nintendo is playing. They're just sitting under the platforms a whole bunch. Uh, every time that N City is getting a hit, it's just a one off hit. They're not able to get too many of the combo studies right now. Um, and so right now, everything at this point is just really, really good action credit. I'm loving these lasers too from Tendo so far, just getting the chip damage in when you can. You might as well, because considering in neutral, Palu doesn't really have a lot of tools except for maybe auto reticle or um, explosive flame, but those do require a uh, considerable amount of startup. Wow, lasers, pretty quick. You can just get that two, quick two, three percent in there. Uh, and kind of force the opponent to come at you. And Tendo has the lead right now, so he doesn't really have to force an approach right now. You know, Tendo has absolutely no reason to be holding forward. As soon as um, N-City whiffs a button in Tendo's face, there'll be a dash attack. That'll be, you know, whatever option that they choose in that moment. All hop neutral and into the up smash. Uh, Tendo is just struggling. I mean, excuse me, N-City is struggling. Yeah. <laughs> he just kept bubbling. That was great. That was really, really solid. You know, if your opponent isn't mashing out, guys, be, don't be afraid to pummel. Do not be afraid to keep tacking on that damage if you know that the opponent... Because a lot of people, some people just selectively just don't mash out of grab. I know it sounds crazy, but Oh yeah. my god, and that's exactly what I mean by that defensive play. Tendo, all of a sudden, they're moving, they're going around platforms, and they stop. You know, and N-City does. N-City whiffs a big old button in Tendo's face and dies for this. That was just good patience, good awareness. I love the pacing of this. Ooh, okay. Yeah, and City just hasn't been able to get anything started yet. Fox can kind of escape a lot of Palu uh, if he wants, and I think defensively is the way that T Tendo has really been excelling at playing this. He's almost been forcing the approaches from N City, forcing him to whiff in there. I would like to see more projectile checks in neutral from N City. You know, auto reticle just to disrupt the temp tempo. If you have something to deal with the fact, if you have something to deal with your opponent kind of being away from you from a bit and kind mm -hmm. of forcing them to approach the majority of the time, it it'll help so much more. Yeah, you can't just let somebody's vibe go on. My man's swinging on you, you know, you, or like, or, or shooting at you, depending on where they are. And my man just hunted for the damage and got his up smash. He, he knew how to finish his food. He knew what he had to do to get the job done. And he played super, super defensive mm -hmm. to, to finish it off. Really, really good stuff. Kind of baiting and city in a lot of the times. And then uh, just capitalizing so, so well on all of his openings. Yeah, they did a really good job. They just... You know, they played it really, really patiently. I think for the most part, N City at a certain point did not know how to go in. N City did not know how to go in. Bait an option from Fox to punish. Um, I think for the most part, they just sort of played back a little bit, thought a little bit, and then they went up to Fox and whiffed the button. Um, and if you try to whiff buttons like that, you know, you're going to explode for it. I also just like how Tendo did not stay locked down in one spot for too long. You see with these movements, he's what the times he did stand still was to make it seem like that it was, you know, it was finally N City's turn when, when really he, my man was just waiting for Tendo was just waiting for his next turn to start up. So uh, he did a really good job of kind of baiting in with movement and just like taking those little pauses here and there. He would flicker his shield sometimes, so maybe get a parry. Mm -hmm. Like Tendo played that really, really smartly. Absolutely. Uh, so we're going to see what the counter pick here was. I think N City's going to have to shake it up a little bit, though. Start applying a bit more projectile pressure to check Fox's movement just a little bit. Uh, and use safer aerials because Nair is good, but it can't. It does no, have a little prevent like that can it's be pushed. It, it is committed. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not super safe on shield. It's like, you know, and your trajectory is pretty predictable. So, if, like, you're not hitting somebody by the time that it starts. You're probably not going to be hitting anybody by the time that it ends. And they're ready to punish it, and you know you, you'll explode for it. You'll blow up a little bit. 
I feel like also against Fox, you want to get him off stage. It really doesn't matter how much damage you have tacked onto him. If you can force him into a situation where you can edge guard him or force him to use one of his lip, uh, linear recovery options, you are going to be all the better for it. So, mm -hmm. definitely. Yeah, they definitely didn't go for a lot of throws mm -hmm. um, at all. They didn't. I didn't see a single grab the entire game. Powerful for catching landings on Fox. Like Fox will try to land with Nair or something else. Pal grab range with pivot grab is ridiculous. You can get, get a lot of good grabs in power. Even if even if the opponent isn't sure. I'm gonna be running it back, you know, Fox and Paltina, of course. No character switches yet. Hmm. Here we go. Hopping into game. You're on Kalos, which is I don't really know about this counter pick because I've seen this stage lauded by Fox being, being over Fox and the tripods are kind of off the table. I know we see it in particular light off the pick towards the Kalos a lot of the time. So. Yeah, like the last thing you want is like a big open fist above your head so that Fox can jump in because that's what Fox does. Yeah. He jumps in on you with bull hop and you know, he starts his mix ups from there. So right now, that you're just sort of waiting. You, I'm seeing like that sort of like attempt to match Fox and Tempo, um, the way I'm starting to see Entity jump in. And that's not really what you want to be doing. You just want to inch your way slowly to Fox, try to break space. Um, yeah, Entity is again struggling to get any combo started without. It seems like everything that they get um, is just like a one off hit. And that's not something that you often see from, uh, from Howard. Let's go for the two for the down smash though. Yeah, you can land it pretty consistently, but you know what? It's all about the spacing and timing, maybe. Oh. Tried to get the mix up with the jab one two into potentially like a roll read on up smash or something like that. I, I like how Tendo has been keeping him pretty on guard the entire time. And has just been kind of boxing really, really well at ledge right now. Box jab being a very, very quick option that is a pretty reliable multi-hit, I'd say. You can't really get out of it too well. Wow, just a quick he punished, he punished that auto radical really, really well. Just a quick double jump back there right there to sneak that in to get the kill off right there. Oh, just yeah, you really going to be looking that smash attack. And again, no significant punish to be had. I would like to see an edge be set up at this point. I want to see a grab. I want to see Fox off stage. But you know what? Um, they're just playing so well on the ground. They're just holding their stage. They're holding their truth. Um, and, you know... And City just looks uncomfortable to me. Yeah, it looks like they just can't get a good landing, and we're seeing lots of double jumps to to just kind of get away from. I feel like just mo mixing up your timing is very, very good. I know that Fox can swing a little bit faster than Palu the majority of the time, but uh, if you are mixing up your jumps, your spacing, what moves you're throwing out, I'm already liking these dash attacks so much more. That was so such, that was a really, really good opening right there by the end City. It seems like the one thing they are excelling at right now is catching landings. Really nicely, just based on those two dash attacks and that excellent just catch with the up air. Didn't decide to wait on stage for Fox to come back. Just went for the chase immediately. And again, look how afraid N City is to be holding the shield against Fox. It's because of how much they've conditioned them to to release it, thinking that they're going to go for another option, going to go for the grab something. Uh, but at this point, they're just getting away with jabbing the shield and getting a whole bunch of damage in the process. Oh boy. Yeah, I, Tendo has just been doing such a good job of not getting overwhelmed at all. Like, he hasn't given... Um, Again, these jabs take me yeah. so much work. Not giving N City any sort of startup whatsoever, just keeping them at bay. And as soon as they know they're in disadvantage, they dip out immediately and, and they force N City to have to play neutral over and over and over again when they when they don't want to. They just want to... They just want no neutral, only punish. They just want to punish. When, and just catching and shielding is just so good. All of these mix-ups and how um, Tendo is approaching shield, approaching defensive play, um, I think they're fantastic. Yeah, they're doing such a great job of keeping the Palo Bay. That, that sneaky, sneaky side be right there to get in, and it's already setting up Palo on the ledge trap right now. It just and City's having such a hard time of fighting their way out of the corner right now. Woo! Yeah, my yeah, starting to maybe fish for it a little bit. It is very clear now. My man wants his kill. He wants his kill confirmed. So this this could be 
a good opening for N City right here to kind of find a way their, their way in a little bit. That back air though, gonna be getting off stage. Surprised we haven't seen like a lot of two frame attempt coming out uh, from Tendel. I feel like they could be going for those a little bit more, but regardless, managing to scope out that up smash right there and securing St. John another another two points and another two points on top of that because they did take the set. So right now. They are the MVP for St. John's. The lead is slipping away from Wichita State more and more as the sets progress so far. Really, really solid Fox play by Tendo right there. I, I, I have, I'm very, very impressed. You know, playing Fox online is already enough of a struggle. Do, doing that at, the, at this capacity, at this level, is, is even more insane. So, yeah. We're, we're, we're going to be seeing an even bigger lead right now for St. John's University. Really, I, these, these plays are so good. I love the openings that Tendo is able to find. Staying very shifty with his movement, not really giving uh, and City a firm read on movement. And that's the scary part about playing a fast character. You, know, you can always keep your opponent guessing with uh, how quick you are because you can just kind of change your momentum on a dime. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see what happens next. Right about now. Uh, who are we getting? We're going to be getting no mill versus there it is. So it's probably going to be Link versus Cloud. Uh, so I'm very, very excited to see this at. No mill's Cloud was very, very aggressive last time they played. Uh, so I'm very, very curious to see how they're going to play this one around. There it is. Wasn't able to get too much started up. I believe last time I commentated, there were some connection issues that were pervading the set mm -hmm. uh, from happening. So this time we're really going to see. There it is. Hopefully shine. Um, but they they have a mountain to climb for sure. St. John's University has been doing a really, really great job of just being consistent and not dropping these games. That first set looked like it was going to be a very hefty swing in momentum, but now the lead is slowly, slowly slipping away from Wichita as they're down 11-4 to four right now in this crew battle. Uh, so it looks like actually we're going to be getting Linny uh, mm. coming up next from the quick change that I saw from Devin. So we're going to be seeing Mega Man Cloud coming out right now. Mega Man Cloud. Yeah. Um. This, this seems like it might be a little bit frustrating for Cloud just because he's not a character who really likes to get his stuff interrupted, huh? And and that's what it, it, that's what Mega Man is, right? He's a character that just sort of throws out a bunch of pellets, stops you in your tracks, runs away, resets um, through the whole game, and then as soon as you start playing back a little bit, it's just able to turn up the heat uh, using Metal Blade and Neutral Web, who is so, so big. Um, it's really going to definitely be like a bit of a challenge for Cloud to get in. But as soon as Cloud is in, I feel like, you know, ledge trapping is going to be super, super huge. Um, you know, and just able to keep Mega Man stuck in the corner. Because, you know, as many keep away tools and interruption tools um, that like Mega Man might have, I think he definitely lacks those burst options to get past Cloud, which is a wall. Like a wall of back heroes and up -bees and dash attacks. Pain. And suffering, that's what that is. Pain. So, you know, hopefully they're going to be jumping into the arena soon. With that being said, we are jumping into the second half of St. John University up against Wichita State. Uh, yeah. This is already set number four. Just this and one more. Um, and then we'll have one more school for the evening. So I just want to say a little shout out to the viewers. That's right. I'm talking about you. I, I appreciate you. Thank you for tuning in, supporting your local boys, and listening to us talk about the uh, the funny video games. Because we wouldn't be streaming had it not been for the fans sitting back at home. I'm looking up. Hydrating. Amazing. Stay hydrated. It's good. It's good for you. Can't, can't, can't say enough about hydration, let me tell you. Um, so I believe both of these gentlemen or ladies are getting set up. Mm -hmm. Right now, currently, uh, let's see which one is going to join the lobby next. But yeah, we've only got two more matches, two more sets for you guys for this time block, or for this rather uh, collegiate battle. So keep that in mind. You know, it, the lead is not insurmountable by any means uh, for Wichita State University, but they're definitely going to have to start putting some sets on the board. If they let these next two sets slip, that is pretty much curtains for them. If Lenny can establish a really, really good uh, set, you know, obviously the maximum amount of points you can get here is eight, but he'll be more than capable of being able to 
keep it back up. I was not hitting my desk with my hand. As you guys can probably hear that. That sucks. Um, but yeah, we're getting into it. Right here, beautiful eyes. Mm -hmm. Into uh, game number, we set number four. We go just as anticipated. Mel Mel with the cloud and um. Look okay, have fun. Yeah. And then in with the Mega Man. Yeah. And just like that, Metal Blade into Dash Attack, setting up a jab lock with those pellets. Not able to set up the catch chase with the uh with the leaf uh, with the leaf shield though, but I really like the attempt nonetheless. So I do recall Lindy being one of Wichita's more solid players. I believe him and Gianote are like two anchors. Ooh, what if the limit gonna come oh, in Oh no! No, no. Gun. Gun him down. Gun him down. <laughs> oh my god. And this, this can be tough just given how good that, that F Smash is at swooping up. Mm -hmm. uh, unlike any other F Smash in the game, and that it's, it's a projectile. It's, it's, not, it's not attached to my man Mega Man. You know, and like the last time that I saw Lenny, I was just so impressed. Yeah. With the uh, and this time, once again, I'm in awe of Mega Man. I have a little bias. I love watching Mega Man play. But Lenny just so solid with it, almost catching that jump. The new show got a coverage. I love the option, but it was just a little bit off. On um, you know, on the timing of it. No, mm -hmm. middle was very, very impressive last time as well. From what I remember, they're a bit aggressive, and I think that's hurting them almost a little bit here now. As Mega Man kind of tries to keep you off of him as much as they can and cover your landings with all these projectiles and stuff like that. So Miller's gonna have to pick his openings a little bit more carefully this time. It has to be very, very safe on shields. Mm -hmm. They try to go for like the side B like box string mix ups, but you know what Lenny said, I'm having none of that. You're not gonna do side B grab on my shield. I'm just gonna hit you from up smash quickly. Then up B, get all the way behind. Oh my goodness. Um, and then they send it a pretty confident stuff lead for themselves. It can be almost a bit of a barrier fretting against Mega Man as he fundamentally challenges how a lot of people will approach this game. He tries to disrupt your tempo and momentum by just throwing a bunch of projectiles at you and walling you out the best he can. And it can be very, very frustrating for someone like Nobel, who is very, very used to taking the pace of the game at his own pace. A lot of the time, my man will tend to swing and be aggressive on the approaches a lot of the time. But Mega Man doesn't let you play that game. When you're playing against Mega Man, you pretty much have to play his game most of the time. You have to wait for him to slip up. You have to wait for him to slip up. Can't, can't I really like the option to roll out of the air dodge there for Mega Man um, because that would, have been, that would have been a clean and easy shield break. So not even wanting to risk the out of shield punish, they just want to be hit as soon as possible. Give a little green cut on punish out of shield. No punish coming from Lenny quite yet, though. Ooh, oh, really? Right there, yeah, Lenny. The middle though, still trying to hang into it. I love how he's still threatening the edge guard as well, and I don't know what happened there for Lenny. Did he die? Two of us, Oh, and this is no Mill's chance to ride the momentum right here as he's got the stage control. Managing to land on stage. That was super duper scary for him right there. The cloud is beautiful. Always, it'll always catch you off guard. I definitely think Lenny had the right idea. They definitely tapped into no mill aggression. Good directional air dodge. Yeah. But you can't be whipping those F smash on shield dog. That would have definitely taken it. I love the option to go for three days. Gotta respect those buttons. Otherwise, you know, you'll just get to leave them. All the, the way thing forward. is, F Smash has way too much startup to deal with whiffs on shield a lot of the time. It only F Smash is only really good for catching like that, like bad aerials in or catches a spot dodge. You know, catches a goal out, especially if they're in the corner. But you know, other than that, you'll definitely get smacked up for it if you hit somebody shield with it. I think up tilt or climb hazard, or rather F tilt or up B would have been a better option there to whiff since they're pretty much clouds. Like F tilt's a quick enough option to achieve the same result that he wanted to achieve with. That F smash and up B is just Cloud's best out of shield option to do it right there. My man definitely thought he had more time to do it. But you know, Lenny managing to keep it together despite two SDs uh right there. But he needs to make sure he's not dropping these stocks because he's he's missing out on the amount of points that uh he could be getting. Uh you know, stocks are very, very important in this modified crew mode, as, as in the amount of stocks that you keep are the amount of stocks that are gonna be added to your points at the end of the entire set. So if Lenny keeps dropping these, he's not really gonna be making a lot of headway for Wichita. Like, mm -hmm. no, this is what no mill wants. Like, necessarily, you don't have to win. You can just keep it close enough to where um, the other school will be down by an amount enough where the, the, the comeback will be almost insurmountable. Yep, every single point matters. All you have to do is just make 
make sure you're minimizing the amount of points that you're getting from them just as much as you're maximizing the amount of points for yourself. Um, I think that game was just exceptionally close. I think it's still anybody's game, really. Um, and I've got to say, like, it is it is quite a joy to watch Sony play. I think they're really, really clean. Yeah, they're, the really they're really, really tight. Um, but no, no, is definitely like killing it too. And I'm not saying that as out of an obligation to be not biased, but you know what? I'm a human being, okay? I have feelings. I have Clifford characters to watch. I will not lie behind the web of lies, you know? So, so, <laughs> um, I think I'll get to game two. Um, what do you guys really watch out for some of the ways that they're recovering? Um, because those SDs definitely did not do them any favors. Uh, the missed air dodge, you know, the upbeat fade back. I don't really know what was going through their head at that point, but you know, just gotta shake it off and move on to the next. Yeah, I think both these players are very, very solid in their own right. Uh, so I'm, I'm, yeah, this set could honestly go either way. I feel like I feel like both players are extremely solid, but Lenny's gonna have to tie it back up. He was he was doing so well. Sans those SDs, I swear to God, my man would have definitely potentially three stocked me. Uh, but Mill, you know, made the most of his openings uh, as he could have managed to stop the bleeding. Mm -hmm. I know, yeah. seeing what Lin, Linny doing, what Linny does best, catch landings and, and keep Cloud in the corner. Do not let the other player play the game. He's just letting these up F smashes rip because he knows that the recovery is the greatest at snapping the ledge. I've oh. never seen so, somebody land so many two flame F smashes as I have seen with Linny. They are so clean with it. Not able to get the drop down back here in time. Held on to the show for a little bit too long. Right now, that's a Mega Man off stage, but in the double jump, still able to land nice and safe though. Uh, but that's a cloud with limit. I love the option to go high there and just like mixing it up completely. This recovery mix is so, so big to avoiding. Oh, limit. that was a crazy good sliding F tilt right there. Yeah, mm -hmm. so sliding tilts are super duper slick. If you know how to do them, it's not really that hard to do them. Uh, oh, if you can they land look though, lucky. they look cool. It is so good at establishing the space you want for getting a quicker option out than a smash attack, and you can do it out of a run. So it, it's really, really smart play from Gomel right there. Oh, they're touching. Yeah, again, I feel like Gomel is responding to these up smashes the same way. I don't really know what else they could be doing there. Maybe try to go for like an up and reset by going to ledge with it um, at that point, but. Like, like, Linny is just so good at setting up for a grab after somebody and you know, just like that. I just can't help but think what they can be doing about it to, to avoid that situation altogether. The mill, though, has Linny on the back foot pretty, pretty handily right now, keeping him on the ledge. However, you can't give up the space right here. I'm liking these air dodges slightly over the ledge. I want to see Linny wait before he throws his options out over the ledge. He could mm -hmm. be, I like, keeping no mill on the back foot so much more if they're just waiting and just throwing up the projectile. I know, though, Nomel looking really, really good this game right now. I think uh, Battlefield was definitely the appropriate kind of thing to make because Cloud does it really, really well. Oh, my just God. even these tensions are going off of right now. So good by Nomel. Yeah, those platforms are huge for Nomel right now. Just they're able to squeeze every single last drop of damage that they could. But how are they going to be able to fight their way out of the corner? And, um, Lenny gives them a little bit of space. They push in too far. He gets hit with a back hit for it. Um, but just like that, the goals have been reversed. Ooh. Okay, tried to go for that back air and do cross flash right there. I love the up climb hazard right there. Yeah, Nomel looking way more comfortable, looks way more used. It seems like he's caught onto the flow chart that Lenny has been playing so far, which is well, aren't safe on my channel. Really Unfortunately, could not get out of that, uh, I believe, air shooter right there. Uh, or that up air. Still looking really, really good for Nomel right now. If he, all he, if he can clutch out this game, it just, it just suffocates the lead. Uh, that Wichita is trying to, to right now a lot better. Not enough percent advantage to be able to get the metal blade and dash attack the right idea, but and the tiger uppercut the long tiger way. PGA golf swing coming out right there. I mean, it's taking an eagle right there into the, into the hole. That's, that's probably a great call for uh, so. No metal taking that game right there, giving St. John's just one more little point to extend their lead against Wichita. Then you're gonna have to find something there. No SDs this game, but Nomel played super duper solidly around these flat around the platform. Um, just these plays were so smart on both sides right there. 
Yeah, they're really solid. They were just really, really clean with it overall. Um, they made some fantastic adjustments, and they were just advantaged. It was just brutal. Like, I, I would not want to be laying there at all because, man, oh, man, getting hit by some of those. That, that was definitely tough. Uh, no, no, cleaned it up, got at least like a last drop of blood that they that they fished for. Um, and overall, they just like, I think they have a really good sense of how Link wants to be drifting, you know, like how they're going to be burning options and disadvantage. And just overall, they really saw a ledge trapping, like, this is really good play. Like, these two players are just both fantastic. Yeah, we're moving into our, I believe, our second game three of uh, mm -hmm. group battle so far. Pretty close up so far. If Lenny really, really needs to like dominate No Mill this game, if they have any hope they can come back, uh, because if No Mill does clutch out this set, I believe it will be close to insurmountable. In fact, it will be insurmountable for uh, for Wichita. Makers come back unless they play mm -hmm. absolutely out of their mind. So depending on how well No Mill does, this could swing the the. It's pretty much this could be match point right here, honestly for for uh, St. John's. St. John's does such a great job of, of just closing. Up that, you know, first time we've seen that. Honestly, we've been seeing a lot of blood between schools, but these have been close games all around. Even if they have them have been slow, uh, they have to be careful. Yeah, and they're getting a bit of damage, a bit of stage control. Nice punish on the down tilt that will shield him. A little bit too fast at the back, it was scooped up. Uh, the Spike Cloud having such a low profile. Ooh, good parry punish, able to get a little bit more damage. And continue to perpetuate with Leaf Shield. But that's already like the second time I'm seeing, you know, Lin facing the complete opposite direction uh, and just shooting Leaf Shield that way. Um, well, you know, Cloud just standing confidently behind. But that's still a limit up the nice and ready to go. Tries to go for the two player, not able to find it though. Ooh, okay. So Lenny doing what he should be doing against Cloud, you know. It's sort of the same mantra when fighting against Fox as well. You want to throw Cloud off stage as soon as you can because that is the biggest moment where he struggles. If you let this man play neutral, if you let him wall you out, it'll be a lot harder to get in. And just a sure you can coming out of shield right there. Or Lenny right there taking that first stock. I don't know where they're both going right now. Both of them going to Brazil right now. Yeah. Uh, ooh. That's a bit of a, you know, like, I don't know what that was. Actually, did that for the job. Oh, uh, not that good. No ledge. For sure. Sitting now, they need to get that. And right now, we're just piling on the damage. We're starting to run away with this lead. No Mel getting a bit too fancy for these kills and burning all this resource, burning all these meters. And we're seeing that right here, uh, right here, right now. It seems like Linny is just kind of turtling a little bit better than No Mill would be used to. Just the defensive play on Linny right now is really, really good. Thought he was uh, going to get a safe punish at the shield right there, but No Mill just spaced it just adequately enough to where he could get that up smash to whip punish. That is up smash. Another short you can coming out. Yeah, these short you can's really paying their dividends right now for uh for Lenny. Yeah, that's how they've been consistently clutching up the stocks. I believe it could kill like upwards of like 85, 90. Uh maybe I'm lying, maybe I'm capping and I'm just being too generous with this. That move is just so so powerful. Especially uh catching those over extensions on shield. Lenny wants to make sure though he doesn't drop this stock here. You know, if he if he does drop this stock, it is one less point uh, Wichita could get if they potentially win this set right here. Not riding no mill off just yet, as it seems like they are starting to make somewhat of a comeback. Uh, Act though did so much for them. Instead of going through the guaranteed damaging down throw, they said, you know what? I'm gonna throw you back for a bit of stage control, and you're able to get a couple of extra hits. Um, that was so so good for them. How are they gonna be able to get off of this ledge so scary? Back here was just like massive impenetrable wall. Ooh. I like how Nomel is still threatening off stage as well uh, against Lenny, showing that Lenny, hey, maybe you can't make it back to stage. Yeah. Just so a lot of time not to get too comfy with it. Yeah. One more good hit from Nomel will seal up the stock for Lenny, so Lenny has to make sure he plays a little bit more defensively. Yeah. Okay, holding on to so well. Like, anything at this point is just extra credit. Uh, but uh, this time, hanging on a little bit too long. Uh, you can't, you can't sleep. Now, Mill's pressure too, just given like his positioning on the stage is great. He kept putting Linny in like bad positions where he had to back off. That is where Mega Man tends to struggle once he runs out of resources. But unfortunately, 
Oh, what an ending. Uh, and had no jump left. I don't know how it got snagged right there, but Linny managing to clutch out the set and get three points on the board for Wichita State. So mm -hmm. that the comeback is, is very, very much real right now, bringing us, I believe, to a score of 12 to 8 right now. So this next set really rides on everything for the like, And about. four points is extremely doable. You just have to win the stock lead each game. You have to win the set, essentially, pretty you much. You win the set. Make sure you don't drop a game and you win the set. Yeah. Um, and if you do drop a game, you got to make sure that you're getting those stocks in, in those other games, that you're at least really, really holding on to it. Um, Bill, I gotta say, did a fantastic job though of making, you know, minimizing the damage as he could. You know, one stock, both games that he dropped, you know, kept it very, very close, very respectable, made it so it wasn't, you know, it wasn't as much of a comeback uh, for Wichita State as it could have been. Uh, yeah. So we're tied. We're tied up now, fully in sets two-two between both of the schools right now. Uh, the MVP for St. John's currently has been Tendo with an impressive six points, I believe. Both Linny and Geonosis are the current MVPs for Wichita State University. So, kind of crazy. Kind of mm -hmm. crazy right now. Uh, this is all on Jay Grunt, and there it is, his shoulders right now. Jay Grunt needs to be able to make sure he does not drop a single game out here, or at least the set. If he wins the set, it does not matter how much, you know, how many games he drops or how many stocks he drops. Mm -hmm. he victory for SJU. There it is. Is going to have to make sure that they win both games without dropping anything here. So the pressure's on. I think we're going to be seeing Link for Ninja or Link Samus, uh, depending on uh, which character Jay Grunt decides on going. Mm -hmm. and, and if anybody, if anybody can do it, it's Jay Grunt. Yeah. Um, because, because Jay Grunt is such a solid, consistent player. Um, they're, just, they're just a really, really good, good Ninja. Yeah. They're able to be up all in your face. They're able to get you know, they're really, really clean with the punishes. They go super deep with the gacha codes. They're definitely some one of the finest good ninjas that Tri State has to offer. Um, and so I'm excited to see what they can do if they can clutch it out for the university or if Wichita can bring it all the way back. What is happening? Is that you, sister, Sean? Did, <laughs> did your sister just pop onto stream? No, well, it's, it seems as though he's a bit preoccupied. Uh, <laughs> No worries. <laughs> listen, I don't. Even, I, listen, I know as little about what's happening as you do, but um. A special cameo from from Tara, aka Mini Fang, coming out. She right there. <laughs> she asked me what I wanted from McDonald's, so I have to give her the order. And I, so I talk to me. Talk. To, okay. Okay. I'm really passionate about my fast food organization. Oh, of it's, course. Um, it's something that I talk about quite a bit. <laughs> so what do, you, what do you normally get from McDonald's? I usually get- Okay, so your first mistake is actually getting food from McDonald's. And let me tell you guys a little something something about McDonald's. I am not a fan in the slightest of how frequently they change the oil. Every time I get something fried from McDonald's, be it fries, be it nuggets, it always tastes to me like rancid reused oil because it has a certain bitter note to it that sort of leaves an aftertaste in your mouth. Burger King, on the other hand, listen, it's one of the big three. It's not going to be amazing food either which way you go. But every single time I've had either the nuggets or the amazing spicy jalapeno cheddar poppers, um, just, just, ugh, it's such a pleasant fried food experience. And I don't know what kind of Burger Kings you're going to. And I agree, it's trash. But compared to the other big three, which is McDonald's and Wendy's, um, I think Burger King is superior. The two list is Burger King, Wendy's, and then McDonald's. Objectively, in that order. I would not go to McDonald's willingly unless I was starving half to death. And that's on what? Sean, that's on what? It's on God. <laughs> I'm supposed to say something like period. But yes, that's my genuine opinion. Wendy's, McDonald's, Burger King. No, I think Wendy's has given me a mediocre eating experience every single time that I've been there. The only thing I will say about Wendy's is they're really, really good in the unique category because they have a really nice baked potato and they have a really nice chili and mama loves her chili. It's me. I'm mama and I love my chili. Um, anyways. I also just realized I finally get an opportunity to try this Travis Scott meal. 
so I, I asked my sister also for the Travis Scott. Oh, you got, you got the Travis Scott. I will say Wendy's is better, but I do not have a choice here. Okay, I, I, the question was, what do I want from McDonald's? So I got, I got a big ass order. I will read it off for chat and everyone else right now. Twenty piece nuggets with lots of sweet and sour sauce, large fries, one McChicken, and one Travis Scott meal without Sprite because soda's bad for you. Don't drink it. I agree with that. Actually, not drinking soda is one of the best decisions I've ever made. And so what I've developed is a cell to addiction. And as a result, all of the carbonation and acid grew into my teeth. So I've stopped doing that and now I only drink water. A sad life I live. But if you guys are ever trying to wean off of soda, I really, really recommend um, picking up salty because, oh boy, is the spicy bubbly water delicious. Um, my stream producer, Devin, uh, has really strong opinions about salty. He calls it needle water, needle water, and I get berated every water, single time. Needles in your throat. It's trash. <sighs> Goodbye, everybody. It's soda, is, is soda needles in your throat? What is needles in your throat? Seltzer is needle water. What about White Claw? I don't know what that is. Everyone was talking about it on Sunday. Like, I think I know it. Whatever. It's uh, it's a spiked seltzer. So oh. it's like... Oh, that probably uh, also is... Also, that's probably also needle water then. Yeah. <laughs> Needle water makes things taste salty. It's weird. Why I do I need my water to taste drink, salty? But they it's only have weird. like a really tiny amount of sodium. Being it's added really. To it. I, it's I don't negligible. Think it's, I don't think it's the actual saltiness. I think it's the sensation that makes it feel salty. I don't know. But it's the carbonation. The the literal same seltzer that you and Helper rave about. I'm like, ew. Goodbye. <laughs> back to. Back, I would normally never to, drink seltzer or sparkly water, but White Claw. If you're of eight, if you're if you're 21 and up, kids, White Claw is the way to go. If you're not 21 and up, that's why you. Why, I'm not talking about this. Go away. Um, but Jay Grunt is appearing to be at the recharge station, the the little frog mains room. So we'll be waiting for him to come back. While there it is, is gearing up with his boomerangs and his bombs, his arrows. Uh, so we'll see. How it goes i hope chad is doing wonderful if you are enjoying the production on the stream make sure you follow twitch.tv slash house of 3000 and also twitter.com slash house of 3000 devin does some great work you can also follow my co-caster here at deramgar smash on twitter um you can also subscribe to their twitch channel or follow their twitch channel twitch.tv slash deramgaria that's just deramgar with an ia at the end uh, you can follow me at twitter.com slash fan9s. I also have a Twitch channel under the same handle, twitch.tv slash fan9s. I also have a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash fangplays. I upload Smash-related videos uh, that aren't just like Twitch stream highlights. So if you want to see some cool content, uh, definitely go on there, stop on by, drop a sub maybe. You know, we're at three-something K right now. I'm looking to, to hopefully up to 4K eventually. So check that out. I have a great series about the best player of each character in Smash Ultimate. So if you're curious to find more people who play your character that are really good or more people to watch, definitely check them out. I'd say I, I, did, I did a lot of research for them, so I'd appreciate it if you guys could watch. Anyway, chill time over here. It gets my personal badge. It gets my seal of approval. Um, I feel people. like every match we've had with Jay Grit, this dude just <laughs> be taking the most amount of time. Jay Grunt has been talking all the ish this entire stream. So I, I want to see him put his money where his mouth is. Okay, I'm, I'm, ba him. I'm back on air. I'm sorry. But like last week, Jay Grunt like scored, I think, seven points. And he was like, you like that? And I was like, not eight points. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to come to not me mark? and be like, you like Could that? Be better? You, question you, mark? you like that? <laughs> I'm like, not good enough. Come on, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> Jay Grunt is too busy in the Twitch chat to play. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm ready to see it. I'm ready to see the Greninja slash Samus. I'm ready to see the Link. We're going to see how this goes. If Travis Scott is not on the meal at McDonald's, I'll be very sad. It worked, Devin. It worked. I got the mm. I got I got the thing that I asked for. What is happening, Jake? Hog champ in the chat right now. I 
<sighs> so how are you doing today, Sean? What's been going on with you? Anything I've you been like doing good. I've honestly been living the dream, which is casting this beautiful game and, you know, getting compensated to do so. So I, I, it's all I could wish for. I could literally cast this game till I die. I, uh, I woke up uh, at 12, said GG's alarm, fist bumped it, turned it off, and fell back asleep for another three hours. Woke up at around 3 p.m., checked my weekly goals to motivate myself for this week. Um, went to the bathroom, did what I had to do, took a shower, grabbed a blueberry muffin and a croissant, crammed that stuff down my throat, ran down here while Devin said, you have five minutes, where are you? And I got on, and I here. So that is what I did today. So it's been a pro I'd say it's been pretty productive so far. Um, you know what I did today, Sean? I woke up at 8 a.m., and, and, and I vacuumed the floor. Do you have a vacuum in your dorm? I do, yeah. I brought, I brought a vacuum with me. Are you, uh, have... are you a neat freak? No. My room is a mask right now, but nobody really? can see it. Um, because I actually have... Uh, I'm really, really good at, at just covering it up. But How I'm big is you your now, room? Your room looks like pretty big for like a single... It's the double as a single. Because they couldn't that's, find me a roommate. That's gas. That is gas. Yes. Enjoy while it lasts. Yeah, because you do it. You can do whatever you want. Having a roommate is cool, but sometimes, sometimes it, sometimes being someone who had a roommate who was quite a degenerate, there, there are some things that you don't wish for in a roommate, uh, such as not being able to come back to your dorm at night, especially when your said roommate has a friend, a friend of sorts over. Friend of sorts, a special friend. Um, a special friend. I hope. I, I hope. I wonder if anybody here can relate. My man Jay Grant is trying to ban in Twitch chat instead of the the actual chat that he should be banning. <laughs> They've been taking so long to do this. Dog, just default PS2, please. Dog, please. please just you want to go to PS2. Although there it is, did ban PS2, which I wonder why, because PS2 is a pretty good stage for. Uh, either way, we're finally getting into it after much deliberation. We are two minutes away from our next time block, so we are. Going to I love how Jay Grunt is keeping up with the meme of Grunt Gang, which is changing your in-game gamer tag to Grunt Mr. L, which is really funny. Yeah. Alright though, we got Battlefield though for game one. Uh, this matchup is pretty scary for Link, honestly. Once Greninja gets in, there is not a lot that Link can do once oh. Greninja's on top of him. But at a, at a distance, this matchup is way more favorable for Link just because uh, boom, bombs, boomerang, and arrows are really good, along with Nair, to kind of keep Greninja out. So we're going to see how Jay Grunt... He's already using these platforms really, really well to catch landings with up smash. Mm -hmm. uh, whipping that up smash, definitely not what you want to be doing. Almost losing the stock thing on just about any other stage. That would have most definitely taken it. Oh. But... Up smash, good. <laughs> up yeah. smash. Listen, sometimes when that move works, you're like, damn, this move is stupid. Need, so I don't need double hit. No single hit. <laughs> move program good. Oh my goodness, all of these whiffed up smashes. Uh, Mr. Okay. L. I just said Mr. L accidentally. Yeah, no, it happened. It happened. It happened. It happened. <laughs> Ooh, really, really good jab block. I love With the fact that they failed and the damage there. Almost caught the air dodge, but just drifting a little bit too far to the left to be able to fully complete it. Good wave bounce shuriken completely throwing uh, Link off the rhythm there. Jay Grunt doing a really good job thus far of finding his openings right now. Just sneaking in with these uh, landing nares, which are which are pretty hefty to deal with. Mm -hmm. and just kind of crossing up and with punishing really, really well. No punish right there, but is going to manage to get the down smash in. Ooh, just a little too low right there. Yo, Jay Grunt looking OD clean right now. Yo, was that a Hydro Pump cancel I just saw? Yo, he feeling himself. <laughs> he's kind of, he's kind of schlipping and sliding. We have moving. Okay, I'm sorry. I can't say that too much. <laughs> that being said, good cross up on the shield though. How are they going to be able to get back down against Link? I feel like just a little bit too much setup there. Gave him a little bit too much space and time to land. Um, Ooh, try to counter. That'd be a good idea. Right, I like right it. Oh, he did. I think, so there is a little error that can happen sometimes where you'll sometimes get a side B instead of an up B given that you can customize the angle. 
You can customize the angle of Greninja's up B pretty well, but unfortunately my man accidentally did it a little too quickly uh, and got the gate for side B. That's enough piece. That's gonna be a quick little SD right oh there. Oh my god, take a shot every single time these up smashes don't connect. It's like, <laughs> they don't function, and I'm okay with Ooh! it. Oh, I thought we are going to see an up smash conversion in some capacity there. Uh, but he is just all over. There it is right now. Jake Run covering oh everything so well. Verizon 5G coverage coming up for him man right now. And he just did not give uh, there it is any room to, to breathe. He kept whiff punishing him super duper well. I would, I think we need to see more A button moves. Um, out of there it is. I feel like he's just relying too much on his B button moves, his bomb and boomerang when he needs to be focusing on walling out as much as he can. These up smashes though, I don't know why he's going for them. Also, uh, it is a good anti-air and it is good at catching behind you sometimes, but if your opponent's not a kill percent, bro, why are you going for a kill move? <sighs> Winning this game so confidently is exactly like what St. John needed to put themselves into such a high lead. Um, I can't help but agree with like the assessment that there it is is just over committing to super mm -hmm. laggy from all my man my man is pulling out the wedding ring on the first date essentially <laughs> he's like oh, so what what are, you, what are your interests marry me uh, that, that, is, that is what my man is saying right now you know you gotta you got take it slow man you, you gotta That's not commit strong. so quickly relationships are the candle okay you don't want to start up too strong otherwise the whole candle will burn out okay. you want to start a nice low flame and you want it to get more intense as you gotta you know get on with it i like it. Um, I like you it. know you put a flame to go to a candle and suddenly you just made a big mess of things and that's exactly what happens when you up smash in neutral mm -hmm. i can agree with that for sure uh so oh i'm so just <laughs> <laughs> Jay Grunt making the point that he should have died 20 times to up smash. A lot of Jay Grunt's up smashes were just not connecting, just given how you have to be very angled. You have to be angled very, very specifically, especially with, uh, depending on the platform height um, for Greninja. So, still really, really great coverage coming out right there from Jay Grunt. It looks like he is switching characters, it seems. Uh, I don't know if that's how the rules work, but you know. So we're going to see the Samus come out. I guess Jay Grunt does not like Kalos as much for um, Greninja, which is mm -hmm. weird because I feel like it's a pretty good stage for Greninja. But maybe he's Samus just trying, I think he's just sliding, man. Maybe he's just trying to feel himself and, and get it all out there who knows but this is also a very solid character that jay grunt has at his disposal mm -hmm. we're gonna see how it goes Three, two, one, you're gonna go. be opting to go for town and city oh and hey, they were supposed to go to Cali. okay phenomenal <laughs> I just love everybody's universal confusion and disdain. <laughs> I'm like talking in the Twitch chat. Yeah, no. <laughs> it's really funny. Do, 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 so we're chilling. Yeah, so they, they meant to go... They meant to go to Kalos, I think. I hope. Oh. Oh. <laughs> okay. All right, here we go. We're getting into it. Already. For real this time, game number two, Jay Grunt up one to oh. Um, Vigitus is gonna have to do like, wait, is that the tag? Or is it the, yeah, Vigitus there is it is. It's the tag, lot, yeah. Uh, to come back from this, the down air, not able to actually get the back air from it, not pop the link up high enough. Any, just like a little bit more through the center. And that would have been a really nice, delicious confirm. So I believe uh there i mean there it is still has a lot of room to still potentially uh 
make it back for Wichita State, but he has to make sure he doesn't drop any more games uh, as it could be pretty detrimental um, right now. As, uh, the score is 14 to 8 right now uh, for the two, so that's a, that's a whole six points that has to be made up. So my man has to two stock him twice, basically. Uh, if he drops, if he drops uh, two stocks this game, that is going to be it. Uh, for this crew battle, St. John's will have the point advantage right here. So that is what Jay Grunt's mission is. He only has to take two stocks in order to secure this crew battle W. Man, it's not looking so hot. Are they like sitting at 100%? This time though, getting the fully charged up smash, just catching this dude out. God damn it, Jay Grunt. Uh, just <laughs> I, I hate this. I hate this so much. Why, why did they make the tag? This is so frustrating. Okay, so only one stock now can be dropped by there it is. Uh, before the dreams have been crushed for yeah, Wichita State. A little bit through that, for to catching that whiff down and they're getting a little bit antsy for the kill. Are they able to get the punish? They are good. So they're going to grab, tries to go through the tech chase on the platform. Had kind of a good idea, so that they drop the execution right now. And right now, Jake Run definitely feeling himself with this movement a bit. Managing to get clipped, though, by that up, up, up B right there. Uh, so now there, there it is, you know, has a very uphill battle to be undertaking right now. Both these guys, even if the, the W is not secured, uh, these guys can still play for points, you know, as to not be incentivized, trying to do the best that they can. Ooh, tried to connect the up smash right there. Yeah, there it is. Just has to be very, very careful. <gasps> Whoa. Okay. This should be the big punish right here. Yeah, I don't know uh, how or why Jagrod decided to opt for the Samus pit here. Uh, I think he misunderstood what stage they were going to, but he still feels confident that he can do it. Samus right there. And the bomb canceling the up smash right there. Mm -hmm. This is looking pretty risky right now for there it is. Ooh, able to get the boomerang, but no follow up. They didn't jump in with it at all. They didn't try to follow up. Or it is. Sitting at a stock lead right now. <laughs> Within the realm of doability, yes. Oh, uh -huh. avoids the up smash somehow. That thing is supposed to be an out of shield scooper. Okay, oh. though, how is he going to make it back? He's going to be very careful in this recovery. No bomb at his disposal, and that is going to be the crew battle right there for Wichita State. Hey. I, I think he didn't realize that his bomb was still on stage or needed to come back, so he had no jump or nothing to make it back. So Jay Grunt is going to be able to clutch it out. That is super, super disheartening right there. Uh, all to end on an SD, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tough stuff right there. Yeah, but either way, this is still like a doable game because after all, the points do matter in the end. Oops. And again, if he, if he wins this game and successfully three stocks, they're still in it. But, uh, yeah. No. Four plus, four plus two equals uh, six, which equals plus eight equals 14. That's a, that's a little too much mathematics and just like that. And unfortunately, uh, the big giant cannon says F mathematics. Mm -hmm. And with that being said, that does conclude. Uh, goodness, what is it? Well, St. John's up against Wichita State okay. University. GG's. Um, that was a pretty battle. Sets mm -hmm. trade off three two right there. Uh, St. John's managing to take three sets, while uh, Wichita State takes two sets, and the MVPs for both crews being Tendo for St. John's with six points, and Linny for Wichita State, uh, and also Geonosis for Wichita State getting a four points combined mm -hmm. as well. So really good stuff to those players in particular. As for everybody else, you know, good hustle, good effort. You can't win them all, and you can't lose them all. So. Wichita State still looking to prove themselves with a, a legitimate win on the board here in this crew battle. They're going to be left wanting, unfortunately, though, after this loss to St. John. St. John securing a nice a nice clutch win in their book, though, uh, for this crew battle. But really good stuff to them. And yeah, GG's all around.
GG's all down. So I guess because we're going to be seeing a little rotation of people, just want to do, you know, like the little, little, little exit routine before we jump into our final school match of the evening. Number one, shout outs to the fans at home. Thank you so much to everybody from both St. John's and Wichita that came in to support the boys. Uh, shout outs to Jay Good for banning stages in the Twitch <laughs> chat. Um, first and foremost, I'd like to give a shout outs to House of 3000 at House of 3000 on Twitter and House of 3000 on Twitch.tv. Devin, he is responsible for all of the production that you are seeing in front of you. He came in here with his own sick replay function, with his own sick slow-mo function. You know, he's nice with it. He's really fantastic. He's really responsible for making New York Smash what it is today. So go please uh, go ahead and check out and support if you can. Number two thing that you should do is go follow EGF SSBU and official EGF on twitch.tv. That is the very channel that you're watching right now. Costs absolutely nothing to go ahead and follow. Number three, you should follow my lovely co-caster at Fan9S on Twitter and Fan9S on uh, on Twitch and Fang yeah. Plays on YouTube. He's responsible for the best player of each character series. He puts in a lot of time into it, a lot of energy. Um, so I highly recommend that you go and check his content out because he's also a good noodle. And then finally, I'm going to go out of my way to recommend that you don't go look at any of my content because all I do is post Pog six times a day on Twitter. Um, it's that's Pog on stream. Yes, that's all I do. I stream, I have a little Twitter account, but I don't recommend that you go ahead and do that. Because I recommend you should. I think you should. Even though her Twitter's cursed, it's very entertaining. Um, Duramgar Smash on Twitter. You can also follow her at Duramgaria. Uh, that's the Ramgar with an IA at the end on Twitch. Lots of good Smash content coming from there. Dara plays with a lot of entertaining players. Also plays on a box. On a con not this not this controller. Not this controller. But but that one. That one right there. That big hunk of metal. So if you're looking for that, you can find that there. Mm -hmm. so. uh, but yeah, I don't know if we're gonna be cutting to intermission or not. Uh, what's this book, Devin? Hmm? We will be. Okay, gamers. So we will now be cutting to a short intermission up until um, our next school. The final school, I believe, is going to be uh, Quinnipiac and Fairfield University. So we'll be seeing you, Vigigamers, in uh, just a couple of minutes. So hang tight.